thank you, Ming, for the introduction, and thank you, Diana and Amara, for the uh, invitation. It's a pleasure to be here in Dhaka. I would like to speak uh, to this panel's interest in the desire and the demand to be international or to be besides the national. I favor the term besides because it is both a preposition and a linking adverb, which means that it expresses both action and transition, some kind of a necessary interval in the production of agency and a turn in the practice of this agency. The term international assumes a relational condition within the schema of nations. The inflection of the prefix inter loosens up and disperses the nation from within and outward, where it might recover a livelier ecology. The incipient international, therefore, tends to render the nation formative and therefore emergent. Having said that, the word international, the word besides, sorry, cautions us not to regard the national as being fully exceeded or transcended and reminds us that no binary needs to inhere in the intuition between the national and the international. It is here that the agency and the turn, the action and the transition of the national absorbs the tactical energies that shape the relations besides itself. We might also want to reassess this international as something preceding the national or disciplined by the national through nationalism. Here, the notion of worldliness might prove instructive in the Philippine context to the degree that it returns to the other zones of contact before the occupation of Europe and America, as well as refunctions the various relationalities enabled by Spanish colonialism. A scholar in early modern music, for instance, makes mention of European polyphonic music mixed with local forms sung in the central islands of the colonial archipelago in the last decades of the 16th century. The making of ceramics in the islands and its prolific trade with China and India, beginning in the year 1000, is another instance of which to take note. The index of the polyphonic and the ceramic within the colonial and the archipelagic might therefore complexify our ideas about the international retroactively. I flesh out my points for this panel through the research initiative I recently directed for the Philippine Contemporary Art Network, or PCAN. First slide, please. Uh, which consists of three nodes, uh, knowledge production and circulation, exhibition and curatorial analysis, public engagement and artistic formation. It seeks to activate a network to coordinate a range of interventions in contemporary art in the Philippines and to cast a sharper profile for it on an interlocal and transregional scale. Next slide. PECAN is shaped by the concerns and anxieties implicated in the phrase place of region in the contemporary. It is a deliberately elusive term, the better per, for perhaps for PECAN to move within a, a wide latitude as it explores its various nodes. At this stage too, PECAN scans a wide horizon to set the coordinates of the Philippine that is oftentimes reduced to the national. It is at this point that the region becomes some kind of a foil, though not necessarily a binary opposite or an alternative. The region is imagined to having a place, a geography, and therefore a geopolitic and a geopoetic. But when place of region is formulated, the geography becomes charged with the urgency of position and assertion of location. P can mindfully reflects on the notion of region as a level of locality. It may be construed as hometown or island within the nation or a space beyond the nation, such as the internation. However, it is regarded the region is turned into a trope to allude to sites of various scales so that it could redeem traces of agency from the hardened identities and monolithic rubrics of nation or globalization. Next slide. For the initial project of PECAN, I researched on the textual production of Raimundo Albano, 
an artist who became curator at the Cultural Center of the Philippines from 1970 to his death in 1985, where he worked for the musical artist and musicologist Lucrecia Casilag and the First Lady Imelda Marcos, founding chair of the center. Next slides, please. So this is the Cultural Center of the Philippines. Next slide. And that's Raimundo Albano trailing his boss, uh, the musicologist uh, Lucrecia Casilag. Next slide. And of course, the bigger boss, uh, Imelda Marcos. Uh, Albano was an artist curator and many things more besides. He painted, did prints, performance and photography, made posters, wrote poetry, and designed sets. Designed sets. As a curator, he organized exhibitions, edited a journal, and presented papers in conferences. One wonders in retrospect what had shaped Albano's mind. A deep wellspring was the popular culture around him, specifically of the graphic kind to include the local comics, posters, and billboards. He was also fascinated with artists like the bricolor Italo Skanga, the video conceptual sound and performance artist Terry Fox, intermedia artist Linda Benglis and Michael Snow, the conceptual artist Tom Marioni, among others. He read Art Forum often and was struck by the critical and curatorial work of Robert Pincos Witten. Among the Philippine artists, he was drawn to the modernist H.R. Ocampo, who is beside Mrs. Marcos, and Pierce Johnny Manahan, Judy Sibayan, Huge Bartolome, among others. These broad sympathies of Albano and exceptional extensions of him constitute my first entry into the international, that the international requires or anticipates a performative expansion of practice, emerging from the artistic talent of conceptualist inclination and connecting to multiple exigencies partly to sustain artistic work, and also to reconsider what that work encompasses, the ecology and political economy of that work, and the situations needed to fulfill the potential of this kind of artistic work. In the course of this process, the artistic and the curatorial implicate each other to respond to the problematics of artistic practice as an articulation of international contemporary art, on the one hand, and to reconsider the pra this practice and this art articulation within a Philippine conversation through the making of art discourse and exhibitions. At this conjuncture, the international inter intersects with the institutional, to which not only Albano had access, but which he mediated with heightened sensitivity as maker of art, maker of discourse, and maker of exhibitions. The performative expansion of the artist curator turned Albano into an ambidextrous, amphibious figure of polytropic possibilities. This brings me to how I organized the book into five parts. Next slide. Oh, this is the work of Raimundo Albano for the Tokyo International Biennale of Prints in 1974, a step on the sand and make footprints, which uh, got a pri uh, honor an honorable mention prize. Next slide. This is the anthology I worked on for PECAN. It begins with Albano. Next slide. It begins with Albano answering the questions of the art critic Sid Reyes in an interview. It ends with Albano posing questions to the Philippine abstractionist uh, of Spanish lineage, Fernando Sobel. Next slide. Between them are the sections on the cultural, the critical, the curatorial, and the creative. These four rubrics serve as my second trajectory into the international. I have earlier remarked upon the creative and the curatorial complicating the normativity of the international and the institutional. I think that the critical and the cultural are salient in the construction of the international because they sharpen the integrity of a post-colonial contemporary form. 
It is through the art criticism of Albano that a consideration of the factual language and inventiveness of form is elaborated upon and constituted in relation to the history of and theory of art in the Philippines and elsewhere and to its particularities as an instantiation of, ins of sensible life. It might have been through the critical lexicon um, as well that the moment of materiality was permitted to play out before it could be subjected to a political commitment or instrumentalized by an ideological position. That being said, the political and the ideological would shape a different aesthetic independent of or even at variance with the conceptualist agenda in the form of social realism, which was aligned with the socialist revolution and the coalition against the Marcos government that supported the programs of the cultural center of the Philippines. This tension cannot be elided and in fact must be reinscribed as a different international. The third entry point is the installative, but I'll just go through some uh, slides here. Yeah. Next slide. So these are some of the shows that uh, Albano curated. Next slide. He was a poet too, a creative, and he did um, graphic design, poetry, and performance with uh, Huge Bartolome and Judy Sibayan and posters for the center. This is a sample of his criticism, the cultural, and then the final part, which is uh, his interview with Fernando Sobel when he was still in, in the university. Next slide. The third entry point to the international is the installative. In 1981, Albano wrote an essay on installation, which he described as a case for hangings. He conceived installation to be an intrinsic urge of the Philippine creative agent, honed since childhood and calibrated in everyday life. At the same time, it is a term transacted through the vocabulary of the Western modern, though enlivened, animated, and excited in local history. The installative aesthetic was an unfolding experiment testified to an environment assertively being primed by the post-independent Southeast Asian nation state to become democratic and developing, indeed destined to secure its rightful place in the international economic and political order. In this agenda to be original in the post-colony was a fraught but ultimately necessary posture. As Albano looked back at installation in the Philippines since 1968, and I quote him, it may be that our innate sense of space is not a static perception of flatness, but an experience of mobility, performance, body participation, physical relation at its most cohesive form. This would rehearse the installative constvolen, as it were, that was Philippine because, according to Albano, it is akin to fiestas and folk rituals from all our ethnic groups. The installative was moreover linked up with the idea of the regional, construing the region to be not national to the degree that it refers to the Philippine province outside of the capital of Manila and to Asia, was a way to contract the international without being beholden to the Western and its main outpost, the Metropolitan Center. It was to the installative that Albano would turn and partly curate the Philippine representation at the first Asian art show in Fukuoka in 1980. To perhaps skirt the constraints of resources and museum protocols, he asked the artist Ileana Lee, next slide, this is uh, Albano in Fukuoka in 1980, next slide, he asked the artist Ileana Lee uh, to carry out her masking tape work within the exhibition space, Lee taped her dotted lines, uh, strips, I don't know if you can see the rightmost part, no? there are, um, Lee taped her dotted line strips of the tape delicately cut uniformly on the floor, wall, and ceiling to delineate space within space. This might have been the first work of installation in the history of the Fukuoka exhibitions in which the specificity of sight, medium, and technique mingled with the conceptual propensities of contemporary art on the one hand and with the logistics of local participation in an international event on the other. 
Furthermore, for Lee to affirm herself as a woman artist in the male-dominated art world of Japan, and most of Asia was germinal. Albano initially intimates how the internal transformations within the form of sculpture extended into something else to become installation. He would characterize installation as new sculpture because it resists being ensconced either as monument or object on a base as prescribed by custom. Instead, it assumes the tendency of the material, spreading, hanging, stretching, laying down arbitrarily. Such emancipation from the base is made possible by a range of methods which Albano marks as rudimentally significant. He draws signals from the work of the Philippine artist Jun Yi, next slide, Jun Yi, who in Wood Things in 1981 would conjure a total visual installation in the form of dry leaves attached to the floor, dry branches hang from the ceiling and float in mid-air. Colored lights heighten strange illumination of the work. Shadows spread patterns throughout the room, according to Albano's description. Albano rounds out his analysis with a confident inference that the fact that a sculptor no longer depends on gravity alone changes attitudes towards the concept of art itself. It is from this assertion that he unsettles the ways by which art is captured in art historical taxonomies. Accord According to Albano, what is permanently in art, the object, what is sculpture, or can sculpture borrow from theater, landscape, architecture, and science? In the same year, Juni coordinated a project called Los Baños Site Works with several artists in which the works, next slide, like um, extensions of nature, sprouted from the ground, floated in the air, surrounded an area, and dangled from branches. It was for Jun Yi, an encounter with nature on, ha on a halfway ground between the mountain and the city. My final entry point in the international is the developmental. Next slide. Albano, next slide please. Albano called the art of the culture of the Philippines developmental. In his matrix, the term developmental referred to how a government of a developing country like the Philippines under Marcos in the 70s had to quickly implement projects like the building of roads, population control, the establishment of security units. Developmental art made manifest in the use of sand, junk, iron, non-art materials such as raw lumber, rocks. And people were shocked, scared, delighted, pleased, and satisfied when confronted with this method of making art. The public mind was, according to Albano, stimulated and the artists interrogated with their art. It was a powerful curatorial stance. It prepared the public towards a more relevant way of seeing. It made one relatively aware of an environment suddenly turning visible." End of quote. For Albano, to be international was to be developmental. To turn visible suddenly from a state of nature to a state of art and culture through experiment and provocation. Imelda Marcos, by the way, it claimed a part of Manila Bay on which to build her cultural center, thus turning sea into land quite quickly. This was emblematic of the spectacle and the speed of the developmental. According to Albano in the text for the exhibition, A Decade of Developmental Art in 1979. Next slide, please. And I quote him, the works take the form of hardly tested materials, earth, sand, raw wood, and other byproducts of nature serve as oils and canvases. Arrangements and methodologies spring from enlightened polemics. Any which way, new ideas receive accusations, but this is no longer an arrow that hits a point. The need to introduce more contemporary ideas is logical as the activities of an art community become more developed. The measure of an institution is its contribution to the development of its concerns. Art in this sense is developmental. In this exhibition are works that deal with the basic philosophical questions about art and existence. To be specific, the works are questionings on what is painting and what is sculpture, or what makes them so. An underlying sparseness and clarity enhances the idea. In any case, the answers are visual, physical, sensual. 
What makes them question our preconceived ideas is their convincing power and energy contained within their material properties as they are set free or manipulated by the artists. It is, mo it is not uncommon for the developmental artist to use any material such as sand, raw, wood, rope, or whatever that is beyond accepted art supplies such as oils and acrylic. The works are thus difficult to accept. End of quote. The Marcos government was invested in the discourse of the developmental. An economist in the Marcos government explained in 1974 that the reforms for the development of the Philippine economy included the reorganization of the government machinery, reforms in the tax and tariff structure, as well as in banking and finance, liberalization and foreign investment, export expansion, regional dispersal of industries, and labor intensification of production techniques, general industrialization, among others. It is interesting to point, point out that a dominant strain in the political science literature portrays a weak Philippine state that is captured by a predatory and patrimonial oligarchy. Scholars, in fact, describe the Philippine state as anti-developmentalist. Its autonomy weakened as public resources are privatized to strengthen a few families. Like the tension insinuated by social realism, social realism in relation to conceptualism, this idea of the anti-developmental in relation to the developmental cannot be elided as well. Next slide. The title of this presentation is taken from an eponymous exhibition curated by Raimundo Albano in 1977. It was a way for Albano to introduce a general, though increasingly interested audience to the mutating nature of Philippine contemporary painting. The term roots pertains to source. The term, the notion of basics refers to principle. The idea of beginnings gestures towards attempt. Contemporary art through this relay emerges, deepens, and initiates. It takes risks to be in the open. Like the entry points that I have talked about, roots, basics, and beginnings speak cogently to the desire and the demand of the international. To be original and originary, to be self-conscious of the materiality or integrity of art and the talent and intelligence of the artist, and to finally advance and move beyond, move through and beyond the Western fantasy of the colonial nation. Thank you. <laughs>